oftentimes we need to use edges that, as you can see here by this fillet, are consumed as a reference. It behooves us to do our best to not use a reference that's going to be consumed. So what we should do is we should set up some geometry that can represent that reference in its uh, original position. And what I mean by consumed is this edge, as I mentioned earlier, is consumed by a fillet. Maybe I do a draft. That edge would be consumed by a draft or some other feature that will remove that edge, a trim body, a chamfer. There are so many of these features that do these things. Shell may remove an edge. Um, delete face may remove an edge that you're using. When you perform a boolean, if you have uh, an edge that's going to be fully consumed that you may need to use as a reference later on that is another type of feature that is um, consuming your edge or face or whatever that may be. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the extrusion right mouse click and here I'm simply just going to make current feature to remove that edge blend. By bringing this back to its original edge, I can set up a few references, datum axis being one of them, along this edge. Next, I'm going to set up a point. Let me go ahead and hide this for now. I'm going to set up a point along this edge as well. And there's various options for where this point resides. It can be a arc length or a percentage of arc length or a U parameter percentage. In this case I'm just going to say per, uh, percentage of arc length and I'm going to put this at 50 percent. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up a datum plane, actually a few datum planes. This datum plane is going to go through this edge and I want it to reside through that point. If I move this point now what I want you to notice is, select OK, the datum plane is associated to it. Next I'm going to set up another datum plane, but before I do that I'm going to bring back my datum axis. Datum plane, it's going to run through this axis and through this face. And I want this at 35 degrees and select OK. Now I've gone through this trouble to set up this structure. The reason for the structure is I'm going to set up a sketch. That sketch is going to create a cutout. That cutout needs to reference all of these elements. Eventually this edge is going to be consumed with a fillet. And again, as I said, a draft may also consume that edge and change that edge current edge location. So having all these references is going to be very important. For the sketch, I'm going to use an existing plane, which is this plane. The next thing I'm going to do is select a reference for my horizontal, which is going to be this datum axis. So you can see my x-axis is now pointing in the correct direction. Last thing I want to do is I want to specify a point. That point being that existing point. And the reason why I want that is, is this is going to put the origin of the sketch at that location. So that sketch, its position now is in itself fully constrained. Historically, if you just place a sketch without actually tying its origin down or specifying its horizontal reference, those things could fall prey to a modification, meaning your horizontal reference could potentially change, or the origin of the sketch could potentially change as well. And those things are important to pay attention to. So now I fully constrain the location of that sketch. And all I need to do is draw in the shape that I need. So I will go in with a profile. That profile is going to go from here and up. And I'm also going to put in a vertical line at the midpoint. This vertical line is going to be changed to a reference. I'm also going to take this vertical line and make it truly vertical. 
Another thing that I want to do is I want to take this line and I want this point and I want to make them, let's go to geometric constraints, collinear. So I'm going to take my Nope, 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 nope. Let's go to the vertical axis of my sketch. Let's go to this line. And again, they're collinear. I'm going to do the same thing with this line and the datum axis here. So they are now collinear. Last I need to do is dimension this angle. And we'll make this 65 degrees. And since I have the theoretical at the top, which is one way to dimension these things, some people want to measure up to the theoretical point, some people want to measure to the actual um, the height of the filleted dart I'm putting in a dart. But in this case, I like measuring to the theoretical. That's just my preference. I'm going to make this 15. And as you can see, my sketch is fully constrained. I'm going to finish my sketch, and I'm going to make an extrusion. So let's go to wireframe, select my sketch, and for the start and end values, for this I will take you and pull you back, make it long and select OK. Let me go to a shaded view. Well, looks like it united it. Let me go back to none. Now that I have that in place, I can go in there and finish this off. And meaning finishing off is I can apply my edge fillet to my edge. I can apply an edge fillet to this edge. And to finish this off, I'm just going to subtract, target, tool, and place my last edge fillet in and around So as you can see, these fillets have consumed all of those edges. But because of the way I have this referenced, if I come in and modify this point, I can even do it here. There's my point. All I need to do now is say I want this at 55% and it moves. Lickety split, no issues. I can do the same thing over and over again. as I have full control over that location. And the same thing with this angle. This angle plane currently is at 35. Let's go to 45. And as you can see, that quickly updates. So these references are extremely powerful. And as you can see, I framed in my consumed edge with a datum axis and a point. That way I know exactly where that edge is. When I go into a drawing, if I need to use a reference or a model-based definition part, something with a, a, a PMI attached and I want that theoretical, I have a reference there for that theoretical. In the world of manufacturing, a lot of times that theoretical becomes absolutely critical. And it should also have the same importance in your design because that's where uh, if it's a stamping uh, injection molded part a lot of times they need that theoretical or a bent tube or whatever it may be that uses a theoretical and you should design to that theoretical to make sure that what you are designing is going to match what the person that's manufacturing this is going to use.